morning learners i am dr munish bharadwaj from the school of engineering and technology uh, as you know we are discussing about the rc uh, design of structures and in first series we took up the design of rcc structures now from today onward i am starting design of steel structures as you know this is one of the course of your uh, BTEC curriculum ET508B and in this course you basically study about the design of all type of steel structures in part A which was ET508A you study about the RCC structure in this particular course you will study about design of all type of steel structures so today I will introduce you with some of the concept of the steel design or rather which belongs to a simple design of structures. Uh, little bit focus or the center of focus will be the steel structures. So first of all I would like to suggest you that this course will need in addition to your course material the code Bureau of Indian Standards has published codes as you know in case of RCC structure that is IS 456-2000 for design of steel structures here we use the code IS 800-1984 this I would like to suggest that you purchase this uh, particular uh, code because this will be required and this is very essential for design of steel structures. You cannot design the structures without referring this code. This code is available at uh, various centers of the BIS, regional centers as well as at the headquarters. So you should purchase this particular IS code. Otherwise, design of the steel structures will not be possible because you have to refer from time to time for getting the permissible stresses, for getting various codal provisions, you have to refer this code. So, please purchase this code. Now, let's come to the point. In any design, there are certain steps and there is a sequence of these steps or the operations that we have to follow. Let us see what are these steps and operations. First is functional planning. When you go for construction or design of any structure, in that part, the first step is the planning, means the functional planning. This part of design or job is done by very experienced engineer or architect. This basically has to be suitable to the site, to the client and of course the aesthetics of the plant that you have prepared should also be satisfactory. So one has to take care about the use of that particular structure or building, what spaces are required, what sort of orientation should be there, what type of site is there, what is the surrounding to that site, whether roads are there, whether other structures are there, the, uh, the nature of the structures whether they are single story, multi story, environmental aspect. So looking into the various factors, one has to decide the functional planning of a particular structure or building. This job is done as I told you by very experienced engineer or an architect. Now, once you have 
freezed the functional planning. Then second step comes structural scheme. In structural scheme, what has to be done? That material is to be selected. That what material you are going to use for construct that particular building or structure. After deciding the material, you have to decide the sequence of the various structural members. That what is to be constructed first, then what next to come in that sequence and the location that which member is to be located where where the column should come where the wall should come where the beam should come so that is to be decided means the location of various structural members is decided after selecting the material for construction and then of course, we keep in mind the load that possibly may come because of that particular structural scheme. So, these things are particularly decided in the structural scheme. Then next comes structural analysis. So, once you have planned your structure means you have prepared the plan of your structure of the building you have decided the structural scheme then you will go for a structural analysis and in that structural analysis what we do that based on the load coming to various structural members then we will go for determination of internal stresses in those structural members. As you know, the internal stresses are bending movement, shear force, various type of stresses. If the load is axial, then direct stresses. If the load is transverse, then bending stresses, bending movement. So, these stresses are to be calculated in this particular part of our job that we call structure analysis. After analyze our structure, after calculating the load and the internal stresses that are coming to various members as per our structural scheme, then we will move forward to our next step or next design operation that is the main job here in this particular course that is design, structural design or design of various structural members. What is done in this particular part or particular job? In this part, we proportionate members of the structural system based on our calculations of load and internal stresses we decide the size of member the length the thickness of the various structural members are decided based on the calculations and the focus is or the scale is the economy and safety. How we decide that particular size of a member is sufficient? That consideration is that the design by which we are coming to a particular size of a member that should be economical and of course the size we have decided that should be sufficient enough to take the load and the internal stresses coming to that particular member means safety. So based on these two factors economy and safety we decide that 
particular size that we have calculated or determined is fit for our structural system. Now, after doing this design of structural elements, then comes the final step that is detailing of drawings because merely doing the structural analysis and design of various structural members does not fulfill our purpose of for constructing the structure for constructing the structure we have to translate our design into drawings because at sight engineers will go by the drawings that we prepare so detailed drawings are prepared after that in which that structural scheme is shown plan is shown structural scheme is shown and sizes of various structural members is given and of course the very important thing that is the details of the connections because ultimately to form a structure these various structural elements are to be joined connected and these connection details should also be there to construct the building or the structure when we were doing our planning and structural scheme at that stage initially we also take care of the cost estimates but the final cost estimates are prepared after the drawing solve because at that stage we don't know the final sizes of our structural members or the materials to be used in the structure after design after doing the drawing details we have the final sizes of various structural members and of course the connection details based on that we can calculate the material required and we can finally finally reach at the cost of the structure so this is the sequence of design steps or design operations now we will look that what type of structural members that are found in constructing this first is flexural members what is flexural member if you have seen a beam in the structure it is a flexural member girders in the beam the structure these are flexural members means here if you see if this is a beam if this is a beam then it is supported on two ends this beam is supported on two ends and this load is coming transverse load is coming to this so action under this load is flexor bending so the structures on which the transverse load is coming and structures is undergoing bending means flexor these these elements are called flexural members or flexural elements so the examples are beams and girders second type of structures that we come across are tension members tension members are those members in which tensile stress is comes and tensile stress is comes means if this is a member then a force is acting this way another force is acting this way so under the action of these two forces this 
particular member is under tension and tensile stresses will be produced in this member so such type of members are called tension members or tight another type of member that we come across in the structures are and very common are compression members compression members are those members in which compressive nature of load is coming just like column or stress so if this is a column that is load is coming that way so under the action of this ax axial compressive load this structure will be compressed this structure will undergo the compressive stresses this particular element such elements are called compression members next the type of member that we come across in the structures is torsional members in torsional members forces are of torsion nature means if this is a beam and moment is applied at two ends of this beam in opposite direction this way so this structure or particular element will undergo the torsional stresses so just like shafts so these members are called torsional members so these are these are the some basic type of structural members that we come across in the various type of structures or buildings now members are of course these design of the members their proportioning is very important but ultimately to form a structure to construct a building these various elements are to be connected and these connections just like beam column connection and these connections are very very important because how so ever your structural member is strong if the connection is weak then your structure is a failure there is no use of proportioning in a such good manner that your structural members are having very good strength enough strength to take the loads and the internal stresses if the connection is weak so connection has also to be strong enough that before failure of any member your connection should not fail otherwise the very purpose of designing or proportioning of a structural member is not fulfilled if connection is failed under the loads and the various type of stresses so the connection is very very important thing in steel design what are the forces or stresses that these connections generally face the type of stresses are direct shear stress direct shear stress means shearing stress under the axial loads second thing is eccentric shear means the connections face the shearing stresses but here the load is applied eccentric to the cg of the connection means in first case it was direct shear direct shear in case of direct shear the cg of the connection center of gravity of the connection and the cg or the point of application of the load coincides means load passing through the cg of the connection then that connection which will experience direct shear in second case in 
eccentric shear what happens here the point of application of load does not pass through the cg of the connection center of gravity of the connection so in this case of course the shear stress is there but it is eccentric shear third type is direct tension when the tensile forces are coming to the members that are connected at a particular point or a junction then that particular connection will experience the te direct tension stresses tensile stresses and next type of stresses are bending moment or bending stresses when the load is acting away from the cg of the connection then in that case what happens that in addition to the shearing stresses there is a bending moment so that bending moment also comes into the picture when that load is acting eccentric or away from the cg of the connection so these are the four type of forces or stresses that connections experience under the various types of loading in a structure now next we have to see that by adopting the steel structure we have to see that what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of steel construction because if we know the advantages and disadvantages of a particular material then only we can decide that whether use of that particular material or type of construction will be economical or safe or not so let's first see the advantages of the steel construction first of all as you know steel has high strength in comparison to other materials so because of the high strength what happens that members having less weight and of course the smaller size can take high load if we compare steel members with the rcc or cement concrete members then you will find that a, a smaller and lightweight material can take the same load that is taken by a larger size and of course a heavier section of a rcc section so because of this advantage of or the property of the steel that it, it it has a high strength low weight and the smaller size elements can take high load second thing high density second characteristic is high density because of this high density what happens that gases and as well as the liquids cannot penetrate through the material means liquids and gases cannot go across the steel so because of this particular characteristic containers for liquids and gases can be made of steel whereas in other materials there is a chance of seepage or leakage of these liquids or gases in case of steel is not there so very safely for storage of liquids and gases we can go for fabricating the 
containers for the liquids and gases. Third characteristic is long service life and durability. Of course, there are some problems with the steel like corrosion. Still, if we can maintain it by painting and other operations, then life is of course, the service life is long and of course, it is very durable material. So, that way, this has an advantage in comparison to the other materials. Second thing, which is very important, next thing, which is very important, is ease in handling, fabrication and erection. Fabrication and erection is quite quick and speedy in case of steel structures. If you are going for steel structure, you can build or construct in a lesser time in comparison to the RCC structure. So, you can save upon time, save upon time in comparison to the RCC structure. Next, next thing is, this is also very important, that replacing of any member. If you find that any column or any beam or any structural member has to be replaced because of some defects, because of some cracks, because of some fatigue, various reasons, for various reasons, if some member has to be replaced, then for steel structure, for steel members, it is very easy. Whereas, this is not so easy if the structure is made of RCC. Similarly, you can, if you have decided that some modifications are required or some different type of member is to be used, you can very well, very easily disassemble the structure. Just you have to open the connections and you can disassemble and replace the members by another one. Or you can modify the shape, you can modify that structure. You see. This is very important characteristic, which is not that much easily possible in case of RCC. Next is strengthening. Sometimes uh, because of failure like under earthquake loading or some cyclone, because of some cyclone, if the structure is affected and if some, if some and that structure is not totally damaged, this is if this is repairable. So in comparison to RCC, here, the strengthening of the structure is very easy. You can add additional member. You can uh, you can replace a defected member or failed member very easily. So that way, the strengthening of the structure is very easy in case of steel structures. And of course, inspection. Inspection because of that material or that structure is totally visible to you here. So, inspection is very easy. Means, uh, members are not hidden or that much, that much complex that you cannot have the access to that member. So, that way and also the fault, any crack, any fault can be easily detected. So, that way inspection and fault detection is very easy in case of steel structures. So, these were the advantages of structural steel structures. Now, let us see what are the disadvantages. 
फर्स्ट लिमिटिंग फैक्टर और रेसिस्टिंग फैक्टर फॉर नॉट यूजिंग और फॉर नॉट हैविंग ए लाइकिंग टू हैव स्टील स्ट्रक्चर इज द कॉस्ट बिकॉज द कॉस्ट ऑफ द मेटीरियल इज हाई मेकिंग द आयरन फ्रॉम ओर्स then transportation then fabricate fabrication of members then erection all these things make the steel structures a costly approach in comparison to cast second limiting factor or second factor which goes against using these steel structures is corrosion as we know steel is susceptible to corrosion and to have or to safeguard these structures we have to regularly paint these structures maintain the, the health of the structure by using other methods which are costly affair so that way these are the two factors that goes against using these steel structures and as you see the advantages are many disadvantages are basically two but very having a heavy weight disadvantage advantage you can say because economy is the major factor and of course the maintenance because of corrosion so these are the advantages and disadvantages of using these steel structures now in structural steel we use various type of steel let's see what are the classification of this structural steel as per our course code defines various type of structural steel first is structural steel standard quality this is governed or this is very well explained in is 226 1975 so if you want to see the details of this particular type of structural steel you have to refer this is code 226 1975 second is structural steel of ordinary quality this material is dealt by is code 1977 1975 third type of structural steel that code describes is weldable structural steel specifications are given in code is 2062175 another type of steel is structural steel high tensile the specifications are given in is 9611975 another type of weldable structural steel steel is also is specified by the code which is of medium and high strength this is also covered in is 2062 these are the basic structural steel classifications now we will see what type of sections are there. because here the case is little bit different from the rcc in rcc you can fabricate or construct construct any shape any length of a member by using the foam work but here this is not the case here we have some limited type of shapes 
or sections that are available in the market because fabrication is a costly affair and the various sections or the shapes has been standardized so that the designers can easily decide upon that what shape or the section is to be used so these sections are as defined and also as available in the market are rolled steel i sections the name of this particular section comes from the factor or the fact that the shape of this section is similar to the i letter capital i letter of english letter next is rolled steel channel section in which the shape of the section is like channel next is rolled steel t section here also the shape of the section is like the like the english letter t next is rolled steel angle section the shape of the angle here is of the section here is like a right angle triangle next is rolled steel bars these bars are available in round shape as well as in square shape rolled steel tubes some sections are in the form of hollow tubes so these are rolled steel tubes and of course in addition to these plates are also used and these are called so these sections are called rolled steel plates so these are the standard rolled sections that are available in the market and which are used in design and construction of a steel structure now because in these particular sections there are various type of sections available based upon weight based upon their sizes and these various type of sections cannot be mentioned in the drawing so what we do because there is not enough space in the drawing to write the full name of these available sections so what we do or what code says that use some standard abbreviated names for these various sections i will read out some of the abbreviated name for different type of sections just like beam sections beam for beam sections sections are available in the size of 75 mm to 600 mm types and various type of sections are indian standard junior beams it is abbreviated as isjb indian standard light beams islb indian standard medium weight beams ismb indian standard wide flange beam iswb indian standard heavy weight weight beams ishb so these are different type of sections and their abbreviated names that we generally use in design of steel structures for column or heavy weight beams which are available in 150 mm to 450 mm diameter it is named as indian standard column sections and abbreviated as issc similarly for channel sections also various sections are available 
लाइक इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड जूनियर चैनल्स आई इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड लाइट चैनल्स आई इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड मीडियम वेट चैनल्स आई इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड पैरेलल फ्लैंस चैनल आई दीज आर वेरियस चैनल सेक्शन दैट आर अवेलेबल एंड दैट आर यूज इन द डिजाइन ऑफ स्टील नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ सेक्शन दैट वी जनरली यूज आर टी सेक्शन दीज आर अवेलेबल इन द डैश ऑफ ट्वेंटी एम एम टू टू फिफ्टी एम एम एंड वेरियस टाइप ऑफ सेक्शन अवेलेबल आर इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड नॉर्मल टी बार्स आई एस एम टी इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड वाइड फ्लेंच टी बार्स आई एस एच टी इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड लॉन्ग लैग टी बार्स आई एस एस टी इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड लाइट टी बार्स आई एस एल टी इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड जूनियर टी बार्स आई एस एल टी अगेन इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड लाइट टी बार्स आई एस एल एंगल सेक्शन इन केस ऑफ एंगल सेक्शन टू टाइप ऑफ सेक्शन यू विल फाइंड वन इज इक्वल एंगल एंड अदर इज अन इक्वल एंगल सो इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड इक्वल एंगल्स एब्रीविएशन इज आई एस ए एंड सेम एब्रीविएशन इज यूज फॉर फॉर इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड अन इक्वल एंगल सो द क्वेश्चन कम्स हाउ यू विल आइडेंटिफाई वेदर ए सेक्शन इज इक्वल एंगल और अन इक्वल एंगल दैट विल यू डिसाइड बेस्ड ऑन द साइजेज दैट आर ऑल्सो गिविन अलॉन्ग विद दिस एब्रीविएशन लाइक फॉर इक्वल एंगल You will find ISA 65 65 by 8 means here the two legs of the angle are same 65 mm and 65 mm means this is equal angle and 8 is the thickness of that angle for an equal angle ISA 175 by 10 means here one leg of the angle is 100 mm whereas another leg is 75 mm and the thickness is 10 mm so here you see that two legs are of different lengths 100 mm and 75 because of that it is named as unequal angle another type of angle that is available is indian standard bulb angles which is abbreviated as ISB bars are also available indian standard round bars isr indian standard square bars issq flats are also available indian standard flats isf and sheets are also available indian standard sheets which are abbreviated as iss so these are various type of sections that are available and i told you the abbreviated names of these sections so with this introduction about the steel structures in the next lecture we will move to the various type of stresses and then various type of fasteners by which way the connections are made and that way we will progress or move to our actual design of structures so for today it is sufficient in next lecture we will talk about the various type of stresses how we can calculate these stresses and the fasteners that are used to make the connections thank you